So at the end of 90 minutes, Senegal showing that they are the dominant force on the continent as far as under-20 football is concerned. My, my bigger takeaway is how far the Gambia have come. From the AFCON, they made waves with their senior national team. At under-20 level, they've gone all the way to a final. Clearly, these are two teams doing something right. Coach, Senegal winning the tournament 2-0. Um, they really have dominated every sphere of football on the continent. Okay, so in, in this particular tournament, by far, they were the better team or they were the best team in the tournament. Mm -hmm. They went through without conceding a goal. Yeah. That tells you how solid a block they are. For me, I've always maintained that it is a solid defensive block that wins you a major tournament. Mm. And the statistics of the tournament concerning the Senegal team clearly tells everybody that they don't need to score more than a goal to win the game. Once they take the lead, the game That's is home it. and dry. And if you put that aside, look, the quality of the football that they've played. It is said that when your under-20 team is that good, mm -hmm. the future of your senior national team is guaranteed for the next 10 years. As Ghana, we have been there before. We've, mm -hmm. we've experienced that before. Yeah. When we won this particular tournament in 2009, mm -hmm. we saw how we we, the Black Stars benefited yeah. from having a solid under 20 We still team. have some of the players in We the still team. have some of the players and, and in the team. It's instructive to note that a lot of the players who won the, the champ tournament for Senegal were present in this team as well. Exactly. So what you, what you actually need to recognize mm -hmm. is the fact that they have people who are planning their football. There's a clear strategy that everybody at all levels is, is supposed to follow. You don't follow that. You are not part of the team. And they've been allowed to work without any form of interference. For me, I listened to the coach and he credited the Senegalese FA mm -hmm. for the, every achievement that they've chalked from the senior level through to the under-20 level. Believe you me, if they were to play the under-17 right now, they'll win it. you don't bet yeah. past them. You put your money on them and they'll go and they'll win it. Because if you look at, again, their transitional play in mm -hmm. Katia, mm -hmm. it was so sublime mm -hmm. that every player within the setup knew what the player in possession would do, the sort of off the ball movement he is supposed to mm -hmm. make to make the life of whoever in possession of the ball very, very easy. Mm -hmm. They hardly gave the ball away. The manner in which they were very composed. And one thing I admire so much about the head coach is that he's always very calm. Yeah. Calm on the touchline. Yeah. Occasionally, when things are not being done well, and normally, if you have a coach step out like that, it means mm -hmm. maybe the basic things are not being done well. Then he'll come and then quickly point it out to them and get them to reset yeah. and then go again. They had a full cap on in their captain. He was, look, I think he was, he was voted the man of the player of the tournament. They had the chap in the number 10 shirt. Absolutely brilliant. Every game I saw or watched him play, mm -hmm. he was a delight to watch. The quality of his control, the manner in which, or the audacity with which he took on every opposing defender on a 1v1 was sublime to me. I, will end, I hope and pray that when they get to the world stage proper, mm -hmm. they will go and showcase themselves as true African and, champions. And, and now you mentioned it. So Senegal have now qualified. Mm -hmm. The Gambia have qualified. They will be joined by Nigeria. All the semifinalists. Yes, all the semifinalists. Yeah, semifinalists have all made. And I think that is a solid representation from Africa. Yeah. Because once Senegal is there, yeah. Nigeria. Nigeria is there. The Gambia is there, Tunisia is there. Maybe it is the North Africans that I don't fancy in this underage tournament because when they any time they go, they did really don't do it. Well. Yeah. But when we are, you have more of the West, West Africans, African yeah. countries there imposing themselves, then you want to believe that look, Africa will go there and will make ourselves very, very proud. I don't see how the Nigerians will not strengthen their teams, I don't see how the Senegalese themselves will not strengthen their team going to that major. Because there is the tournament that will have Brazil, it will have Argentina, mm -hmm. the, 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 the big guys from Europe mm -hmm. will all be there. So the dynamics are going to be very, very different. But from what I have seen, or from what we've just witnessed yeah. in Egypt of this Senegalese team, I think with one or two 
additions, especially in that time. Because at that time, I think they tend to, they, they, they wasted too many goal scoring opportunities. But at the world level, yeah. every opportunity, you, need to be you really need to be clinical because if you were to <laughs> give chances away, then uh, you don't utilize yours, you'll be found wanting. Look, congratulations to them. There are lessons to be learned mm -hmm. from the people of this country. Plenty. Plenty, Plenty lessons to Plenty. be learned. Like I said on Sports Panorama the other day, our juvenile football is a mess. There's nothing untoward encouraging about juvenile football. For the past two, three seasons, we've never completed a our season. juvenile league. We've never. The league has always been truncated and champions selected in the middle of the season. Hmm. That is not good enough. Because at the juvenile level, that is where you're supposed to get it right. Yeah. You can't flout that. You can't do anything onto when it comes to that. You need to be very spot on in your organization, in the way it is presented, trying to seek the development of the young player at that level. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to Senegal, I'm told that they have a very solid juvenile league that runs in, at all age levels. We need to mimic I, that. I, I just we need to copy that. Senegalese are just organized when it comes to sports. Because yes. I'm not saying it's not even a football thing, right? If you look at their basketball right now, Solid. Now the Basketball African League, which is ongoing now, is being hosted in Senegal. Senegal. Now they have some of the best academies in the world now in basketball. Yes. And the NBA is looking the NBA at them. Is they are the looking at them. Because naturally, Padia, Ped, the way they have been built by God, if I may yeah. put it that way, they have they are people of good height. Good height, yep. And, and they are harnessing that to put infrastructure in there place. You go. A vision there and you policy go. in look, place to guide them. They are God bless the day. Uh, our football people, our leaders, mm -hmm. will, will, will realize that now football is big time investment. It's planning. Deliberate it planning, is not about sharing. Money. It's not about sharing money to people. It's about putting the money in infrastructure, put in, putting the money in the true protagonists, which are the players themselves, mm -hmm. investing into them so that they will come out and make this country proud. But we are very fond of sharing money among the big people for no work done. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. For me, look, can you imagine? We are going to the Ghana will not be at the under 17 World Cup. Yep. Ghana 20. will be at the under 20 World Cup. Look, there were moments or there were errors in this country's footballing history where we hardly missed. A tournament. A yep. tournament. At yep. the, any the, level. At, at the youth levels especially. Yes. Ghana has been one we of the very always, we, we, And any time we've gone there, we've showcased the true Ghanaian character. Mm. But it's sad. But look, congratulations to the Senegalian. Like you said, they are not only African champions. They are not only b b beach football champions. Mm -hmm. They are not only Chan champions. But they are now under 20 it's African not, champions. No, it's only left in the women for Senegal. Yeah. They just left the women's football. Yeah, just the women's football yes. and, then, and then they've gone through it. I, I, I want to just say two things about this, just speaking. Isn't it just interesting that two countries next to each other are the best under 20 teams in Africa? Mm -hmm. It just shows that... They're neighbors. They are yeah, neighbors. they're neighbors. Fact, and if we are speaking historically, the Gambia was created out of Senegal, yeah. so the yes. British had access to the river. Mm -hmm. yes. So they are very similar. It just shows their talent. And when you put that effort in, look at what happens. Because for years, Senegal were an almost team. They weren't making yeah. it. We saw their talent. Yeah. They are talented players, but they weren't but winning. They just never Finally, they've won the AFCON. And you can see the result. They didn't win the AFCON by chance. No. They started with their plan. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that plan, that is, and honestly, I believe very soon, the Black Stars is going to be full of players who don't grow up in Ghana, who are not born in Ghana, who are born abroad, mm -hmm. dual nationals. Because if we don't plan here, where, where are the players going to come from? Even if you look at our national team now. It's even happening already. How many of our national team players... Are players who were groomed here. Groomed here. And yep. even played reasonable minutes in the Ghana Premier League. You can't think of any of our Black Stars players. It's key rare players these days. Who had actually had a... Look, Asian and Asamajan and the rest, they all played for Liberty. They had at least even one season, if not yeah. just one yeah. season. We don't even have that anymore. Nope. Look at someone like Salih, his, his youth career in Spain. Look at... Mohamed Kudus, Kudus. Straight to right to dream, Kamal Dean. Then we have all our dual nationals. Mm -hmm. The truth is we can't be relying on other countries to develop at your all. Talent. Develop your talent. We are getting them to play because, okay, their parents are Ghanaian. They have some Ghanaian. But that should be a complement to the Ghanaian, homegrown Ghanaian talent. You don't build a nation from the outside. It doesn't work like yeah. that. It should yeah. apply to all our institutions. And the black stars, I'm not saying, I don't have a problem in dual nationals. I don't want anyone to 
get this idea that I don't want dual nationals to play for Ghana. Far from it. I'm just saying that we can't have all our players, the majority of our players, being in other systems, mm -hmm. playing even youth football for those countries. And it's like when they are not good enough, we pick them. And, and I, I think that's a brilliant point because what happens is that if you let other people train your players, now you don't have much of, uh, much of control over them in terms of trying to teach them the system that your country should be playing. Because of guess course. what? One person is coming from the Danish football system, somebody coming from the Spanish football system, from somebody the from the American, the English football. It's just all the over the place. Is, there's nothing wrong with the mix because you look like Sadio Mane. Sadio mm -hmm. Mane was groomed in Senegal, but he's being complimented exactly. by Khalidou by Koulibaly, what who, who grew up in France. Yeah. There's a comp Khalidou yep. Koulibaly was eligible to play for France. He ended up playing for Senegal. It's a good mix. You can see there's talent, but it's a mix. Yeah. They have some who were groomed in France mm -hmm. and some who were groomed in Senegal. I then think right now our team is other. leaning too much to the foreign side. Yep. It's not because, and it's not a bad thing in the sense that they are good players, they are talented players, but why is it that the local Ghanaian yep. system is unable mm -hmm. and, to and, produce and, and, players and, to compete? Yeah. And another thing I have a problem, just before we even go on, is, is with coaching, right? Because I always feel like at a point you need to stop hiring foreign and Caucasian coaches. They, there needs to come a time where your but country you see, has... is related mm -hmm. because we don't build up the infrastructure in the local exactly. system that's, for that's the coaches saying. to even learn exactly. to Look, be able to reach their level. It took a Senegalese coach mm -hmm. yep. to win, to win the them the AFCON, to win them We've beat We've never soccer. won the AFCON without win with a foreign them, coach. To win them to the said. champ mm -hmm. again with mm -hmm. them the under 20. When Egypt were winning the AFCON, no, but we've it was, never, it never won the AFCON with them. We've when, never, when CKJ was we've taking never won the AFCON, AFCON with a foreign, foreign coach. coach. That's what I'm saying. There they, they just needs to come a time where we are looking for a black stars coach and our first th thing is we are going to hire a foreigner to come and take over. The, the coaches here should be good enough to select Look, leaders. And even, I think and they are good enough. Even Chris Hutton is a Ghanaian. I will still consider him a foreigner because Chris Hutton, what grooming do oh, he's have really in a his, foreigner. Fo I mean, in his football really education in Ghana? Let me say this. Mm -hmm. Our coaches are good enough. But very typical of the administrators, they will not allow these coaches to work. Look, if you are close to... Look, I had opportunity to interact with the late Uncle Ben Kofi. The late coach Sam Adi, the late Cesar Sajos Atukefio. I had proper relationship with them, mm -hmm. proper. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to these men speak football, their knowledge about football, do you think that if Coach Adi didn't understand football, he would be invited yeah. to the World State to go and explain what the multi system. Well, th these people were part of the technical yes. teams of FIFA. Yes. Yep. They were recognized at that level. But if whoever the FA president is, if he puts a Ghanaian in charge there, he's completely prevented from doing his job. More or less, the level of interference mm, yeah. is beyond measure. We've just heard our immediate uh, Sikakono, somebody who is a native, a proper servant of yeah, this former country. Former Black Stars captain. Former Black Stars captain. One of our players who went foreign yeah. and put Ghana on the map. Yep. But when he was given the opportunity to coach the Black Stars, he wasn't the given people the at the FA didn't believe he could do the job. So constant interference. At a point, they said they were bringing him a technical, a technical director. director to come and do what? So, is it we are our own problem? Hmm. You are good enough to manage football in this country, but you don't see another Ghanaian good enough to coach the Black Stars. I, th I think there needs to we be. We are a good enough to be yeah. to 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 vote and elect a Ghanaian as a president. Yeah, we should be good enough to he is capable of managing over 35 million people. You say a Ghana is not good enough to manage 26. Oh, it's 26 now, yeah. Maximum 26. No, come on, man. We need to change our mindset. I, I, I strongly affiliate with that.